Alors, euh, mais, 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 je t'ai compté. Là, 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 là. Oh, mais, 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 oh, là, là, là. Ah, Marcus Conti reporting. I'm not a I'm not Alistair Conti. I'm not a psychic. I'm not a I'm not a Satanist. I'm not a Satanist. I don't have a whole room full of occult tools. Pick a card. <laughs> ah, Ace of Guns. Oh, that's a pretty good card. I'll pick another card for you. What else we got? Ooh, three TVs. Three TVs. Let's see the final outcome of the cards. Do a little reading for today. Oh, the Ace of TVs, Ace of Wands in traditional tarot means it's going to be, we're going to have a positive new outcome, something brand new. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know what you're talking about. I look into my, look into my crystal ball. I'm a very powerful man. I'm very powerful. I predict stock market. Stock market outcome. Ah, Bernie. So, <laughs> so Marcus Conti reporting. What the hell am I talking about? Man? This fucking shit is crazy, man. This fucking god damn. You do a little. You do a little goofy video, man. Suddenly you're a fucking Satanist, man. These guys are crazy, man. People are crazy in this world, man. We'll talk about that later. The uh, the LARP, the LARPers, right? So we'll talk about uh, Ruth Boehner Ginsburg and her hanging on for dear life. Is she eighty six years old? If uh, you know, if she goes, man, Trump gets another pick. So we'll talk about her and her pancreatic, her pancreatic cancer. Uh, Trump is um, finally, finally capitulating on the. The fake, uh, ooh, sorry, China. China is responsible for everything. He seems to be capitulating now and realizing he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. And we are heading for a market crash. We'll do that. Just yesterday, I told you that the uh, put out a video that uh, Monmouth uh, poll had Bernie Sanders up front. Well, today is a new poll. Uh, it's like a new day, right? It's a new day, and they're already bashing him. So Politico would just shit on Bernie Sanders' head. Uh, I'll talk about the, you know, just rig polls. I told you they were all rigged. And uh, we'll we'll do some LARP news. Uh, some really, really, I, I mean, some, uh, it, it just, it. I underestimated the stupidity of some of the players in this, <laughs> in this game, I guess. I don't know. Fucking, and some of them are quite dangerous. So we're going to talk about, we'll talk about at least one dangerous character. So, Mark Scotti reporting on the Ruth Boehner Ginsburg. She is the, if you're not aware, she's one of nine Supreme Court justices in the United States of America. A very powerful woman, decision-making the highest level of our judicial, one of the three branches of power, judicial, executive with the Trump, and, and uh, legislative with Congress and uh, with the House and the Senate, right? So, the... Supreme Court. I I, just, I feel like I mean I got we almost have to re-educate America because you've been so goddamn gaslit. Uh, so Ruth Gaynor, Boehner Ginsburg is one of nine. She sits on the liberal side, appointed by um, by the good Bill Clinton, and um, she's eighty six. And if she goes or resigns, if she you know drops dead or resigns, I didn't say drop dead. You know what I mean? If she if she goes, Trump gets another pick. So let's read. Ruth, Gainer, G Ruth Boehner Ginsburg makes first appearance since her cancer treatment. Uh, so she's been in hiding since January. Uh, Supreme Court Justice Ruth, Ruth Boehner Ginsburg on Monday appeared in good spirits as she accepted an honorary law degree from the University of Buffalo, as if she needs another law degree. So she was talking about her health. I am 86 years old, and yet people of all ages want to take their picture with me. <laughs> so, <laughs> sparking laughter uh, from the audience. Got my, got my attention. The Brooklyn-born justice. Oh, fucking Brooklyn. I knew there was something about her I liked. The Brooklyn-born justice uh, then did a 30-minute question and answer session. All right, so she's hanging in there. She appears in front of the crowd. by talking like this a little, just, you know, cheeks hanging out, but... She seems to be uh, fairly alive and well. The tumor was treated 
definitively, and there is no evidence of disease else, elsewhere in her body. <laughs> okay. The court said in the statement Friday, adding that no further treatment is needed at this time. Uh, so if G Ginsburg's health uh, is in the spotlight, this is important, since her retirement or death could potentially give President Trump his third Supreme Court pick on the bench where the conservative majority stands at 5-4. The justice who has um, appeared, uh, was appointed in 1993 uh, by Bill Clinton, missed oral arguments in January for the first time after she underwent surgery, removing two cancerous growths from her lungs in late December. So cancer on her lungs in December... Now she's got pancre you know, tumor on her a, on a pancreas. She also had two other bouts with cancer in 99 and 2009. Um, right, so, so there you have it, right? So Ruth G Bader Ginsburg, right? If she goes down, she's going to, you know, and what's in the balance? You know, everything that's conservative, gun, you know, gun rights. Um, what, what, what else? Uh, people are worried about uh, Roe v. Wade being overturned, the abortion in America. A little conservative, right? So probably make fucking drugs illegal, illegal again, locking everybody up. You know, kooks. Right? But nonetheless, so we, we have to watch uh, Ruth Boehner Ginsburg very closely. Uh, so Trump. <clears throat> so can Trump uh, keep the U.S. stock market bubble from popping as world economy slows? It's not slowing, right? No, the markets, are, they, they, they're doing fantastic, right? They're doing fantastic, right? The U.S. president has so far managed to keep the market buoyant by offering economic hope to, claim, to calms, calm nerves. As China's economy continues to slow and more multinationals begin to feel the pain, the tipping point may, be too far, may not be too far off. Ah, oh, Malcolm, Malcolm Goldwell's the tipping point. See, it doesn't happen gradually. It happens all of a sudden, like a pop. That's what happened in 08 when the markets crashed. They froze and, and uh, all hell broke loose. It is now clear that no deal is likely in the U.S.-China trade war. There never was, right? There, was, there never was a logical you know, outcome. All our companies are there you know, living high on the hog, using their slave labor, not paying any tax whatsoever in the U.S., and you want to blame China for our problems. It's just, it's just stupidity piled on top of idiocy. However, U.S. President Trump is still trying to make a deal. If not this year, then after the election in 2020. <laughs> uh, he is trying to keep the stock market bubble afloat. If the market stays up, he is likely to be reelected. If not, it's adios, Trump. Mm, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that assessment because I think that if you put any shit sandwich Democrat against Trump, he'll beat them because the, you know, sleepy masses will just, you know, he'll, he'll spin it and twist it. But not Sanders. If he, if he goes against Sanders, he loses. The U.S. market has gone through another convulsion over recession prospects. The Fed's move uh, to lower the, lower the interest rate only magnified the recession's recession fear. Why would the Fed cut rates otherwise? Right. So it is a bubble, and uh, that's what I want to talk about. Trump has successful in keeping, uh, keeping the stock market afloat by always dangling some hope whenever it becomes jittery. Oh, um, I should have highlighted, highlighted this. But um, in, un in nonetheless, I just wanted to read one good sentence it had in here about the it explains the it explains what a bubble is when the bubble pops right all of these markets are 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 you know grotesquely uh inflated and the only metric that people seem to care about is the dow jones industrial average or the nasdaq and these are for the most part fictitious numbers at this point because the major market holders the major uh market makers in the market are actually banks right and they, they're holding the market up. They inflate it. It's a, it's a debt market. It's a market based on, uh, you know, infl uh, debt. It's not, it's not, we don't have increased GDP because we're manufacturing more stuff. We have it because people are, are becoming more in debt. And then the banks and big business uses debt as a, as a sign of 
growth. It, it's absolutely, absolutely degenerative ways of looking at the market. So, uh, it's a bubble, 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 bubble all over the place. The global economy has come back with, some, with more debt and more asset bubbles. Here it is. As the United States, and I'll move on to the next, as the U.S. Uh, unemployment rate is still at a historical low, the recession fear may seem odd, but now is not a normal time. After the 2008 global financial crises, the global economy has come back with more debt and more asset bubbles, right? More debt and more asset bubbles than the last time it crashed only 11 years ago. In a bubble economy, recession is a self-fulfilling expectation. Right? It, it does happen. It happens every time. So, so that's, that's all about uh, Trump. He's, he's dancing with the bull there. He's, you know, he's fucking, he's doing the... He's doing the tango with the bull, and the bull's gonna, you know, bite him in his ass. Let's see. So, so yes. So a few days ago, I did the say I did the the magic ritual to elect Bernie Sanders. Bernie. <laughs> Bernie. Feel the burn. Feel the burn. Right. And and what happened was what happened is that the market actually went up. I, I'm not not the market, but Bernie Sanders went up in the polls, right? So yesterday I talked about uh, a a poll that came out, the Mammoth poll. Oh, this is so important, Mammoth poll. They're all fake polls. Again, all the polls are fake. They're corporately, you know, manipulated polls to make uh, to manufacture consent for Joe Biden, the shit sandwich for president. Uh, so, but yesterday, one slipped out. Mammoth made a mistake and put Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren at twenty percent, and Joe Biden at nineteen percent, putting jo- putting Bernie Sanders just for a minute in the lead, right, for just a day. <laughs> that was uh, twenty six. So this morning, Politico and Morning Consultants uh, one ups them, right, by putting Joe Biden at a whopping thirty three percent over Sanders is twenty percent. Uh, it's crazy. They still have uh, Tulsi Gabbard at one percent. They're not going to give her her two percent in the major polls. They're just going to leave her at one percent, so she can't get on that stage. But again, another rig poll. So they still have Harris at eight, Buttigieg, Buttigieg at five, O'Rourke three, Buda, Yang two. Yang's hanging in there. I like, but I love fucking Andrew Yang. Andrew Yang. So another another fake poll. Um, uh, you know, manufacturing consent. Get their hopes up. Get the Dems' hopes up. Oh, yes, your candidate is leading. And now get their attention and then stick the knife in their back. Right? So fake poll. Fake poll, rigged, rigged election, rigged primary. Right? That's, what, that's, what, that's what time it is in America. So this is pretty funny. So, I, again, I, I mean, this, I want to try to be kind and, 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 and understanding of the LARP war. That's why I got involved in, in this. And I know it doesn't interest everybody, but there's a lot of people that it does interest in. It does, do take an, does, <laughs> does take an interest in. A lot of people take an interest in this because they, are, they, they find themselves online as, um, as a way to socialize. I mean, it is one of the things that we do. We have friends all over the world, quote friends or acquaintances all over the world on, on our social media platforms. Here on YouTube, you're, you know, you're, watching, you're watching me, for example, and you're communicating with other people in the chat room down below in the comments, and I filter in through the comments and jump into the conversations, and we're having a nice little conversation with each other, and this is kind of one of, one of the social you know, networks of our time, right? A way to, it's like the bar, or it's, the, it's like the... In, in the case of the LARPers, it's more like junior high school, uh, where for some reason they like to chop each other up. But nonetheless, so I, I did this, um, this video, this, uh, <laughs> is it, you know, obviously, obviously a joking video about Bernie Sanders. I was bored one Saturday night, and I did a, a, very, a very interesting video about uh, Bernie Sanders trying to invoke my, my psychic powers, calling up my psychic powers from the 90s. And, and trying to get Bernie Sanders elected. So, so one of the primary researchers, quote, researchers, I use the term very lightly, a researcher in the LARP community, Steve Outram, I had him on the show, and I questioned him about the, all the fake lawsuits and, and, and such. And, and, and um, 
I, I, I find that I, had, I was on the fence with, do the LARPers believe their own bullshit or is it, are, they so, are they so psychologically damaged or defected that they can't tell fact from fiction? They can't see a joke from reality? Right? That, that's the fundamental problem with the LARPs. And I think that people that get sucked down the rabbit hole following you know, psychotic characters, and they're all over the web. I mean, this is, this is a new one, but it, it is, it's kind of interesting. So listen to his assessment of um, Alistair Conti. So uh, one thing I wanted to talk about today was uh, the... Uh Hi, mate, it's Popeye down in Australia talking to Mars, diving in his car, parking. It's a busy, mate. <laughs> so he's down in Australia. That's where he lives. He lives in New Zealand. But now he's driving around. He's a richy rich. He's got money. He made his million dollars, and now he drives around in a car telling everybody about, about how everybody's a Satanist. Uh, Al Alistair Conti a.k.a. Marcus Conti, C-O-N-T-E, and he did a black magic spell uh, for to promote Bernie Sanders on his channel with an inverted cross, black robes, chanting the works. And, yeah, I was thinking when I watched this thing, like, at, at Burning Man, which is basically the, the largest public satanic ritual in the world, uh, you know, they, 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 they do this all this satanic stuff they, they have people dressed up as devils running around the whole thing's inside a pentagram but it's not it's not in your face you have you have to really go looking for it it's not immediately obvious i mean you're surrounded by victoria's secret models in lingerie wearing angel wings so you know f forgive me if i don't recognize that i'm standing in a three mile across pentagram at the time you know i had other things on my mind uh, but you know, the defense they have at Burning Man whenever challenged of of anything to do with uh, particularly the Satanism is they say, oh, well, we're just, we're just being ironic, you know, and you don't get the joke. Oh, don't you have a sense of humor? The whole thing was a big joke. And so, you know, Conti's got this video and he's mocking Christianity. And so I'm thinking, well, is it, is it just a, is it just a joke is he just going is he is it this kind of like a a troll that he's waiting to see who picks up the bait and goes oh my god marcus did this satanic video and then he's going to go aha i was just joking and you obviously don't have a sense of humor because you thought it was for real but who believes in the devil right i don't know i thought maybe it would be something like that but but in considering that possibility you know i was struck with the thought that all the way through the video there wasn't one thing to indicate that it was a joke or ironic or anything in any way that there wasn't anything funny about it in any way it's fascinating right it's a fascinating psychology right it was the only joke aspect of it was making a mockery of christianity with the, the upside down cross and things like that um but you know i was like well you know should we take this on on face value people are out there doing black magic uh, rituals for Bernie Sanders. And well, as it turns out, uh, now Marcus is claiming complete, complete credit that his magic spell has led to a surge. Bernie Sanders has surged ahead in the polls and is now like the uh, the, le the leading Democrat for, I don't know, was it may maybe New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, one of the news, one of the, one of the new areas that uh, since Marcus's satanic spell, Bernie Bernie has surged to the lead. So he if he's done a couple of uh, video streams now, claiming credit for the spell. So I think that you know it's fair to say if you do a magic spell, uh, and then it seems to have the intended effect that you had behind the spell, and you then claim credit for that intended effect being a result of your magic spell, then what that that's gone beyond the joke, right? You're not just doing an ironic, funny thing for the hell of it to be a trick for anyone that believes that you might actually do that. No, you did the actual thing and then you claim credit for it when it works. So this guy is literally casting fucking black magic spells for Bernie Sanders, for a communist, for a Bolshevik, you know, a Jewish communist. That's a Bolshevik, right? 
Is there some distinction I'm not getting about it? Wow. Is that, isn't that that amazing? Man? I find that fascinating. Thank you, Steve Altram, for doing that. Ah, so so there's a lot of a lot of convoluted stuff in there, right? So it is it is a psychology of of uh, one one sees something that they don't understand as a mockery of their religion. Right? Now I, I have no religion. I'm not a religious person. I believe in you know I believe what I believe. I, I wake up in the morning. I, I I I walk. I'm healthy. I'm happy. I I don't necessarily believe. Uh, uh, I guess I would be an atheist. I don't. I don't this I don't necessarily not believe in God, but I don't believe it can be it's it's in the eyes of the holder. In layman's terms I would be an atheist, but in, in reality I'm actually a high a high believer in God. It's just that my explanation of God wouldn't wouldn't uh satisfy you or wouldn't you couldn't you wouldn't be able to comprehend it. Which is, you know, I mean it's not egotistical to say that, but it is it is clear that 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 God, whatever God is, lies within. Now, th- these individuals, this this individual in particular, has the it c- claims to be a researcher, but can't see fact from fiction. Now, it, it is very important. There's a lot of LARPers, and I think that Outram is either a class A con artist trying to convince you that he's he's stupid, and then and then he backs it with research, or he really is stupid and just believes that that uh, that there is no joke in the world, that there is no satire, that everything, 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 everything is literal, and that's that's where I tend to believe he lies because when he interprets the fake lawsuits, all the you know the frivolous lawsuits, I had pointed out to him that the the exact nature of the frivolity, how they are frivolous, where 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 a LARPer will say something and then. Uh, and connect it to something else that's really not related, and then snowball it into a conspiracy theory, uh, and that is the nature of the the you know incomprehensible uh, nature uh, of these uh, knights, and they see themselves as knights in shining armor, right? as you know. So 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 thank you, Steve uh, Outram. I mean, you know, I'm still I still I, I marvel I marvel at your ignorance. <laughs> so. Thank you very much. So uh, that's that's a fun LARPer, but this guy's this guy's a bit of a creep. Right? This guy is bottom of the barrel. I just want to touch on it quickly because he is a, a basically a psychopath on the edge of uh, reality. He has no platform. His name is Thomas Schoenberger, and he seems to be like a, pred- a, a predatory stalker of sorts. He goes around from from uh, player to player. And he tries to he tries to insert his name into the narrative. Now he hasn't. He's apparently he's he's shucking the boots of people like the Fango and I don't know. You know, if you even mention their names, then they they harass you. Lift the veil. You know, he's been, these guys are afraid of him. Dave Atkin. You know, Dave Dave the actor, uh, Jason Goodman. They all know this guy. I'm not saying that they support him or whatever, but. They they allow or, or you know the, uh, the the hoax wars people or Lestat. Thank you, Lestat. Lestat, I like Lestat, man. Lestat's putting out some good information on this guy. But but anyway, this guy is creepy number one. So he, the, I'll, I want to show you the the nature of of the creep, right? So I don't know a few a few hours ago, maybe fourteen hours ago, he he sends me a uh, email. Now I had told this jerk off fifteen times to not communicate with me right i told him he sends email he tried to get on my show i told him fuck you go fuck your dead mother i right, get it get out of my face you creep all right because he's a creep uh, so so out of nowhere he comes back right all right quit sending me bullshit emails <laughs> i never sent him anything so he starts with a lie that's how he that's how he convolutes the story you are a complete idiot you lie and as you curl up the fango's ass with a paddle now that you are on, now know that you are on, that you are on your own, Marcus. You are on your own, Marcus. You curled up the fango's ass with a paddle. What the hell are you talking about? What are you, what are you talking about? Your sanitation days will come in handy. I told you FBI was closing in on your assholes. Now you start sweating. Too funny. It's obvious you overplayed your hand. You thought I was kidding. Cease and desist. It's like, right? It's like psychotic, um, antagonistic, 
Uh, all those things. Uh, real fucking nut job, man. So the exchange went on for a while, right? And, you know, and I'm sorry for the people that were bu- copied into that. I just wanted you to see the nature of this creep uh, chasing people around. I, I, to me, I don't care. You can do it all day to me. It doesn't matter. Because I got fucking, I got, I got 10,000 years of psychic powers behind me, right? I have fucking... <laughs> Right, I give you the fucking monster claw, right? It's, you, know, you know, this is what I do. But anyway, so I tell him, hey, cockhead, I thought I told you to go fuck your dead mother. Still around? Go dig her up and fuck her. Right. Vulgar, right? I'm vulgar. I'm a vulgar individual. Because right? that's how you treat vermin like this. You don't fucking snuggle up. This guy's, this guy's a fucking psychopath. The guy is, is, a, is a crazy predator. Oh, thank you, Marcus. Interest in my dead mother. It's a good think journalism remains in such competent hands. Right? So I hit him with all of this uh, data that people have been sending me because they're trying to get him locked up because I believe there's a search war- uh, a warrant for his arrest, but they still haven't located his exact address. We're getting close. Uh, so so it's, here's some of uh, a compilation of some of the research, and I throw it in his face. Listen, fuckface, you are a special kind of creep. I, I just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm antagonizing. The guy's a loser, right? So he, he then flips it to say, I'm stalking his 19-year-old son <laughs> from out of nowhere. Uh, and uh, what else? Uh, so I, I give him this video about where, where we have actual evidence at this point where a guy, his name uh, is Jesse, and he, uh, Schoenberger got into this guy's life and actually pretended to be a doctor and called his wife's psychiatrist prescribing Xanax. I, I mean, it's just, I'll play the video if you think I'm kidding. I right, say, so I go on and on, fuck your dead mother, stick it up your ass, you jerk off loser. I, I even copy in the, the, uh, the attorney general here in New York, you know, trying to shake him off a little bit. Now there's a record, the attorney general, you got, they got the record of this guy, right? Here he is. Right, he's a fucking serial predator, right? He's doing it to the wrong guy, though. You're supposed to, Thomas, you're supposed to do this to weak little weaklings, people that, oh, I'm so afraid, oh my God, oh, oh shit, oh my fucking God, oh my God, it's fucking Thomas Proen, Thomas Hamburger is coming after me, oh my God. So he's a fucking retard, man. So anyway, we go back and forth, and he keeps, he keeps trying to get me to stop sending him emails while he's sending emails, right? Anyway, but that's that's the uh, so here's here's the a guy that tells us exact the exact nature of the creep. Listen, my wife that she did not have any psychotic issues or you know so forth going on that she just needed rest and she should try to get some Xanax and Xanax would bring her down right away and it, basically he. This is a call. He allegedly had a phone call with Thomas Schoenberg. You can look at the link right here. All these videos are up on YouTube. Just uh, put in Gang Stalker Thomas Schoenberger Exposed, and it's on uh, Frank Freddy, FKN Freddy. Thank you, Frank Freddy, for putting this up. He claimed that Xanax would be a cure-all, and uh, that's also what he told the medical facility. Uh, He denies any of this stuff, but in emails after the fact, when he was confronted with uh, you know, playing the role or portraying a doctor. All right. So what happened is Schoenberger calls the calls the doctor, and, and goes on the record as a doctor, Mister Doctor Schoenberger, neuro, neurologist in California. That's a felony right there. Uh, so the guys out there, it's it's gone. What I'm saying is that the LARP has gone off the board, and I don't know what the guy's motive is. He's just he's just either a psychopath that needs to be thrown in jail. Or he's, you know, or he's a psychopath that needs to be thrown in jail. There really is no uh, alternative explanation to why he's doing it. Is there some kind of profit motive? Is this guy somehow rich and he's going to, Schoenberger then comes around to extort him for money? I don't know. Whatever it is. Who the fuck knows, right? But nonetheless, the guy is dangerous in the sense that you see right there, he's, he's approaching someone's doctor as a doctor felony uh he tried to deny it and then he also made comments that you know did you forget my father was a doctor and things of that nature so you know obviously he he did what he did um 
So you can watch that on your own. It's very, it's actually riveting and very convincing um, that uh, Jesse put that up. And uh, so you know, hopefully, you know, this guy will go down, right? This, he's saying he says in the end of the video somewhere about he he uh, has has you know the information is in the hands of the FBI. Good. So if there is a warrant, they'll they'll get him pretty soon. So the other one is this guy. This is uh, Mr. Prepper Kitty. This is Dave Acton, right? To cover, to simply do your journalistic job of, he may not like my opinion, but I covered his lawsuit because I thought it was fascinating. The case of um, uh, Dave George Acton, Dave George Schwaghard versus uh, Jason Goodman, in which the judge basically declared them both conspiracy theorists. I thought it was a fascinating story, and and you know, and I still do. Uh, although, you know, of course, Mr. Acton wants to become the, the knight in shining armor. He wants to, he wants everybody to think that he is, you know, some sort of high genius rather than just a, you know, a, a, uh, an adult lopper, uh, spinning conspiracy theory. So for the last, I don't know, I guess a, since that article, he's put out these, these, uh, videos. I, I think I'm at, I counted maybe like 14 of them already, all with my name in the title and what he does is he's now spinning the story that somehow the judge, the judge is a, is a, is a TWA 800 conspirator. Uh, that's why she sided with Jason Goodman in the case, dismissed the case, because she's hiding the fact that she was involved in the, eight, in the downing of the flight 800 TWA. It's, it's, um, it's insane. It's fucking insanity. What? What is the motive that drives, you know, adult people? Like in the case of uh, Outram, we, we see that maybe he's just a, he's just a, you know, a very naive character. And in Schoenberger's case, it's, it's a psychotic, dangerous character that needs to be jailed. What is the, what is the, what is the motive to, to continue to spin these narratives so that someone like me will talk about them in a, in a positive light or... Or give them any attention is good attention. You, as long as they're talking about me, I'm I'm getting attention. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. It's my calling. Is it that naive? I think for for uh, Acton Schwaggart here, uh, his motive with with Goodman was to extort a settlement uh, out of him in that case, right? Where you know because he was suing him for three million dollars, and he figured, yeah, he's a rich queer. In New York, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this guy down. He doesn't know what he's in for. I'm gonna sue him. I'm gonna drag him into court. I'm gonna tie him up in court, right? Over and over again, right? So, so he he was looking for you know looking to stick Goodman in the back, uh, and maybe take some money from him or I, who the hell knows, right? I mean, what is the what 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 else could be the motive? You just enjoy harassing some stranger from New York? Uh, none, none of it makes sense. So, Marcus Conti reporting on this. Um, Almost the end of August already. Wow, we're already summer's over, man. Damn, this fucking shit is crazy. So you guys could hate on me all you want, you know, LARPers, but uh, we'll keep following Ruth Bain, uh, Boehner Ginsburg. Uh, we're not wishing on her death, but she, you know, another year and a half if she's still if she's still there and she survives. Um, uh, if a Democrat can win, I don't think it can. But if 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 Sanders gets in. Um, then she could res resign in peace. <laughs> she could die in peace, and we can assure that somebody will get a good justice in there. But if she, if she, if Trump wins again, she's very likely to die in office, and uh, Trump's going to get another pick. The, the whole, you know, Supreme Court's going to tilt to the right. And um, what else? What else? So the China war and the fake, um, the fake polls. Bernie Sanders slipping, slipping thirteen points overnight. <laughs> So, Marcus Conte, reporting. Still reporting. Still reporting.